Hi, I'm Laura Coyle, and this video is all about the fundamentals of working with the Appearance panel in Adobe Illustrator. Let's dive into the concept of appearance. It's the term Illustrator uses to describe the visual attributes that define the look of an object. These attributes include strokes and fills, whether they're solid colors, gradients, or patterns. There's transparency and effects like drop shadows and more. All of these things make up the appearance of an object, and you can change appearance attributes endlessly, whether it's a color or an effect, without changing the underlying paths. For example, look at this fluffy cloud. I'm using a roughen effect that I applied in the appearance panel, and here in outline view, Command or Control Y, we can see the wireframe view and the simple shapes that make up the cloud and that rough texture is just coming from the effect. So it's kind of like giving your objects an outfit to wear. And the appearance panel is the central hub for creating and editing those looks. You can open the appearance panel from the window menu, and you'll see it usually comes docked with the graphic styles panel because they work together. The graphic styles panel is where you can save appearances. It's like a closet where you can keep your favorite looks. The Appearance panel has some similarities to the Layers panel, so if you're used to using the eyeball icons to turn the visibility off and on, you'll feel right at home here in the Appearance panel. You can also drag and drop to change the stacking order. So you can see I just dragged the fill over the stroke. And by default, strokes in Illustrator appear centered on the path. So when I have a fill above my stroke, it obscures part of that stroke but I can go ahead and drag this below the stroke just to put it back in the default order. The buttons at the bottom let you add a new stroke or add a new fill, and I'm just gonna click to add a fill there. And we can see that stacks up here at the very top. I'm going to drag it down to the bottom and I'll give it a color, light blue, but of course we can't see that because of the stacking order. The yellow fill is above it. When I turn the visibility off and on, you can see that. The next button here at the bottom of the panel allows you to add effects. And there are a lot of effects in this menu. I'm going to go to Stylize and choose Drop Shadow just to add a simple drop shadow to the shape. And we can see it right there. The next button lets you clear the appearance, and when I do that, we lose the drop shadow and the stroke and fill are set to none. So I'll undo that using the shortcut Command or Control Z. The plus button, first we need to have something selected to use that. I'm going to click on the drop shadow to select it, and it's highlighted in blue when it's selected. Now I can click on the plus button to duplicate that drop shadow, and we have two which you can see is a little thicker right here. Now I'm gonna take this extra drop shadow and drag it all the way up into the stroke. You can see that dark highlighting, and when I drop it, that duplicated shadow is now applied only to this stroke. And we can see it here casting down over that yellow fill. So effects can be applied to individual strokes and individual fills, and they can also be applied to the object as a whole. So before applying an effect, make sure you know what's selected so you know where you're applying it. And to apply an effect to the whole object, you can click in the empty space at the bottom of the panel to deselect any strokes and fills. And then you're ready to apply an effect to the whole object. Now I'm going back up to that drop shadow to select it, and I'll click on the trash icon to delete it. So we've covered all the buttons at the bottom of the panel. Now let's look at the flyout options menu. So we've seen we can add a new fill, add a new stroke, we can clear the appearance, but here's one we haven't looked at, reduce to basic appearance. And when I choose this, I lose the drop shadow and that extra light blue fill, but I still have the yellow fill and the blue stroke. And this is a basic appearance. Here I've made a quick chart so we can see exactly what Illustrator calls a basic appearance versus a complex appearance. A basic appearance has only one fill and one stroke, and those can have solid colors, gradients, or a pattern fill. 
A complex appearance is anything that has transparency, multiple fills and strokes, effects, and brush strokes. Now these don't really look complex actually, but this is what Illustrator calls them. There are a couple reasons I point this out. One, when you look in the layers panel, you can immediately tell the difference between basic and complex appearances by looking at the appearance target. This column of circles here that lets you select the appearance of an object. Basic appearances have a clear empty circle and complex appearances have shading in the target. So sometimes I like to use this when I'm looking through my file to see where I've applied transparency or effects. It's a quick way to understand your file. And the other reason I point out the difference between basic and complex appearances is this option in the appearance panel flyout menu, new art has basic appearance. This is such an important setting and it's easy to forget it's here. When you want to continuously draw with an appearance that Illustrator calls complex, so something with transparency or effects or brushes applied, you need to uncheck this option and this allows you to draw with a complex appearance. So anything you just selected, you can continue drawing with it. Otherwise, you'll be drawing new objects with just a fill and a stroke, which sometimes is preferable if your last appearance has a lot of effects applied that take time to render. So now you know a lot about working with the appearance panel in Adobe Illustrator. To learn more, you can go to the graphic styles panel and the library menu here and just work your way through some of these interesting effects that have already been created for us. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this scribble effect here and you can always come over to the appearance panel to look at the recipe for how this was created and learn about how you can create your own special appearances in Illustrator. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator here on YouTube and in my own learning community at lauracoylecreative.com. Sign up for my email list at the link in the description to get Illustrator tips to your inbox every month. And thank you for watching.